Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to do a paper three type of calculation related to macroeconomics. We will be calculating GDP and GNI gross national income from a, a, a table of data, uh, and we can also calculate per capita income. The data uh, I'll be using is real data that I've pulled from the uh, Federal Reserve St. Louis uh, branch. Um, this website does provide uh, GDP data for the United States. And in the video notes below, I'll provide a link uh, to this PDF for 2021. And this is the data that I pulled for what we will be uh, calculating in this paper three practice. So on a uh, paper three, they can give you a, a table of data or perhaps a statement with data. And from that, you must select the data to calculate um, GDP or GNI or GDP per capita, et cetera. Just for a little bit of review, and I'll have a link in the top right corner to this explanation of the circular flow. The circular flow in the context of macroeconomics helps us to understand the three approaches to measuring production. GDP is related to spending, spending by the household in theory. So GDP is the sum of consumption spending, investment spending, government spending, and spending by foreigners, exports minus imports. That is called the expenditure approach. Spending is equal to the value of output. That would be the output approach. And in theory, we will assume that the income uh, gained by the household from their wages, interest, rent, and profit when they provide factors of production to firms, we're assuming that the income, the total income is spent by the household on goods and services. So thus income is equal to spending, spending equal to output. And the income uh, is in this sector of the circular flow is the income approach, which is equal to wages plus interest plus rent plus profit. And there's an additional way to calculate that, which will go over. So that's a little review from the circular flow of what we mean by the expenditure approach, the output approach, and the income approach. So here we have some questions. Uh, here, looking at the table, real gross domestic product data for the United States in the year 2021, all figures are in billions of dollars. And we're going to first try question number one, calculate GDP, real GDP, from the data provided. All right, so all of this is real uh, GDP data as opposed to nominal data. So you can pause the video now and calculate GDP, select the appropriate values, and then we'll take a look. So go ahead and pause now. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate this. GDP as a formula is equal to consumption spending plus investment spending plus government spending plus spending by foreigners, exports minus imports. So all I have to do is just select the appropriate data. Here I have consumption expenditure or consumption spending. So there's my first set of data. GDP would be equal to 15,741.6 billion dollars plus I'm looking for the investment spending. Here it is, investment spending plus $4,120 billion plus, now I'm looking for the government spending. Here it is, government spending plus $4,052.7 billion plus brackets, exports. Here's the export data, 2478 0.3 billion dollars minus the imports 3,396.5 billion dollars. So there is my formula. So what does this work out to? So I'm going to sum this up first. So here we have GDP is equal to the sum of consumption, investment, and government spending. And according to my calculations, that is $23,914.3 billion. 
$1.3 billion plus what we have here in brackets. So in brackets, we have 2,478.3 minus 3,396.5, 3, and that works out to a negative value. It actually works out to negative 918.2, meaning that the U.S. is importing more than what they're exporting. Imports greater than exports would give us a negative value. Here's exports. Here are the imports. We see that the value of the imports is greater than the, uh, the, the value of the imports is greater than the exports, so it's going to give us a negative value. So there we have our formula. It's going to be 23,914.3 minus 918.2. And that works out to a final answer of GDP, real GDP. All right, in all cases, it's real, 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 real. I'll put a little r, real, 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 is equal to 22,000. 996.1 billion dollars. Right, billion dollars. That should be your answer for real GDP. Selecting the appropriate data and putting an answer of 22,996.1 billion. You can also state it is 22 uh, trillion 996 billion 100 million. Let's see. Uh, oop, another set of zeros. 22 trillion, 996 billion, 100 million uh, US dollars would be the appropriate answer for that calculation, calculating GDP. Um, I'm not going to skip ahead to question number three, since it's asking us to calculate GDP per capita income. Um, and with that, they will give you the population data. So here we have the population data of 336,997,624 uh, people in the United States. And so you can pause the video here and calculate what would be the per capita income data for the United States. Go ahead and pause now. Okay, so let's see if what you calculated is the same as what we're going to calculate right here. So per capita income is simply GDP, GDP, uh, whatever the value is divided by the total population of a country. That will give us the per capita income. That tells us on average how much output or how much is the value of all output produced by each person in the economy. So here we have $22,996 billion or $22,996,100,000,000. So I'm going to take that figure and divide it by the total population of the United States, which is 336,997,624. And if we divide that, that should give us a figure of 68 to 68,238.166. Typically on a paper three, they ask you to calculate to the second uh, decimal value. So we'll round that up to seven. So here we have the per capita data uh, for the United States, 68,238.17 is the value of all goods and services produced on average by each person in the United States. So that is our GDP per capita answer for that question. Oop, uh, 238 point, yeah, 17. Yeah, that's correct. Now let's look at this final question. Calculate GNI from the data provided. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this, and then we'll do that last calculation. Okay, so there's uh, kind of two main formulas for GNI. Could be also three, so I'll put all three here. 
So GNI, gross national income or the income approach is the sum of income from all factors of production. So one way of calculating GNI is the sum of wages from labor plus rent for land plus interest for capital plus profit for the entrepreneurship. That is a, uh, a legitimate formula for GNI. But on an exam, that may not help you. Maybe you don't get the wages, rent, capital, profit data uh, within the table provided. So another way of calculating GNI, it's equal to GDP plus income from abroad minus income sent abroad. All right, uh, probably in another video, I'll, I'll go into more detail about the difference between GDP and GNI. But uh, GDP is essentially measuring production within the borders of your country, regardless of who owns um, those productive processes, foreigner or the citizens of that country. GNI is looking at all the citizens of a country, regardless of where they're located. It can be located within their country or abroad, and all of the wages, rent, capital, and profit that they're generating. So it's GDP plus income from abroad, so our citizens and the income they're generating, minus the income of the foreigners within our country. So we're sending that back out. Again, I might create a video just to explain that in more detail. Another way to calculate GNI that you might see in an exam is GDP plus income from abroad minus income set abroad is the same as what we call net income from abroad. All right, so these are the three ways of calculating GNI. Wages plus rent, capital, profit, GDP plus income from abroad minus income sent abroad, or on the table data, they might tell you net income from abroad, so you can use that. All right, so we've calculated GDP already in a previ in, uh, previously. So let's remember that GDP, as we calculated, was real GDP was equal to our calculations of 22,996.1 billion. And here we have income from abroad and income sent abroad. So we're going to add in brackets income from abroad. So that's 1,145 billion uh, minus income sent abroad. 892.5 billion. Okay, all of that in billions. So you can go ahead and pause and make your calculation, see if you're able to calculate GNI. Okay, so uh, sorry, this is real GNI here. So GNI is going to be GDP, which we have here, plus the income from abroad minus the income sent abroad. So you should have gotten, when you calculate this, 22,996.1 plus in brackets there, 252.50. And that should equal 23248 billion US dollars. Okay, so that is our real GNI. So we calculate GNI 23,248.6 uh, 23, billion, which is greater than the GDP that we've calculated. So we see that GNI is greater than GDP, meaning that the total wages, rent, capital, and profit generated by citizens of the United States and their ownership of their labor, capital resources, land resources, and the profits generated by U.S. owned firms is greater than the total production generated within the borders of the United States. All right, um, and that's it. I'll create a, a series of videos go, going over paper three calculations. If you have any questions, feel free to comment those questions below. And don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.